Thank you for joining me for another quick hits conversation. Today, I'd like to talk about managing upwards. How do you manage someone who has authority over you? Tim, can you kick us off? So this morning I was speaking to somebody and I said, I'm going to be talking about managing upwards. And she said, what's that then? So I think we ought to start with a brief definition of what we're talking about here. So for me, uh, managing upwards, it, you know, we're all familiar aren't we, with the idea of managing a team and the team tends to be hierarchically below us. So what we're talking about here is managing uh, the people above you, those who have either authority over you or possibly something over you that where you place them higher than where you're at. Uh, and possibly it's a risk. It's a risky business because if you do that managing upwards, maybe you might get fired or you could not get that salary rise you wanted or whatever. So how do we elegantly, how do we smoothly, how do we in a cool way manipulate our boss? Oh, come get, on. Now it's not manipulation. To get what we want. <laughs> So I think that, that we're talking here about how do we do that? And, what, and what's, what's interesting here is we, I mean, I've talked many a time about got to manage upwards, but I've actually never stopped to th ask, to think how and why. And so this is, this is really interesting, very timely. So. Good, good. So what does it look like? So for me, the first thing that comes to mind for me is that you can't manage upwards if you don't understand your boss's goals. If you don't know what your boss wants, you have no way of helping them achieve them and helping them help you achieve whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. I think there's, a, there's also a parallel step to that, Robin. You can't manage upwards if you don't know you can. So, oh, yeah. uh, so there are people that, well, you know, I live in this hierarchy and um, my boss tells me what to do. And I do, you know, the sort of, sort of command and control style, slavish leadership. But you can manage upwards, you know, and I think let's empower people to say, well, if you can and you know you can, and I so strongly recommend you have a go, um, then then that then applies, doesn't it, Robin? Which is how do we know our manager and then what what tools can we use in which to do this, say, elegantly? Mm. And, and, and there is an element of sort of mind reading involved here in that you need to understand your manager's pain points. And to the extent that you can help them with their issues, you're probably going to be more successful. I know I've, I've heard the term coach upwards as well, but that's that's a challenge. And and um, I'm you know I'm not sure whether I would venture that way. I think there's got to be a lot of trust and respect for one another. But feedback's important as well. So I think feedback can lead to asking uh, the occasional coaching question or, or well, what would you like to have happen? Going back well, to guns. Are we assuming that managers don't want to be managed from the bottom? Is that something that we're making an assumption about that they, they want to avoid it? Results may vary. Um, some <laughs> are clearly going to be more receptive than others. And, and you need to figure out one is your manager receptive to, to, to getting feedback and also organizationally, if that's possible too. Yeah. And, and, as, and, oh, mm -hmm. and as leaders, should we be inviting should we provide an invitation? Is there anything that I'm not doing? Mm. Yeah, then... that's, a good, that's a good way of looking at the other point. Yeah. I, I've got the word fear in my head. I don't know why, but uh, you mm. know, this idea of, you know, if, if your boss is tyrannical or, or difficult or overbearing or perhaps a bit controlling, the thought or uh, the concept of entering into this idea of managing upwards becomes much harder, doesn't it? I mean, if they're open-minded and yes, yes. they're, you know, they're the organization's up for it. James? Well, we, yeah, if, if done incorrectly, managing upward may lead in, shall we say, unplanned career transitions. And <laughs> that could be a good thing in this context, you know, and, and, and th this is a real risk here. Yeah. Well, and, uh, or is it, you know, is it, 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 I guess it could be, couldn't it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But I, I wonder think it depends if... upon the leader. Yeah, and I also wonder, James, you talked about, and I, I, I know I mentioned elegant at the beginning. I think you you sort of began that elegant uh, approach in that you sort of said, what are the pain points that your boss needs? So we, we're not going, managing upwards is not two forces meeting each other and going into conflict. It doesn't have to be. It can be, you know, it's not, as, as they always say, the willow bends in the wind, the oak doesn't, it just blows straight over. Mm. In this case, what we need is we, we go into our boss pushing them, in a place where they feel comfortable. So if their pain point is they've not got the sales target up, well, maybe managing upwards could be, I can help you with that if, yep. uh, you know, so there's a sort of, you, you think 
you know, that's that's the elegance of this piece, isn't it? It's finding out what they want to make it happen. I mean, I can tell you what it's not, because when I was in my very early 20s, I worked in the corporate space and I did not have the communication skills that I have now. And it was not uncommon for me to walk in my boss's office and be like, this is not working. We need to fix it. And here's how it's going to happen. And guess what? That did not work effectively. <laughs> Even though I was right. Point. <laughs> you were the company... main point in that case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But company culture comes into this as well. So, you know, are we still in that industrial age? Or are we in that digital age, which is more focused around people and, and outcomes? And, mm. and if the culture's there, that should hopefully promote this, this type of communications, this two-way communication, this trust that's needed, this rapport that exists. Um, you know, I think you've got to, you know, as much as our managers get to know us, we need to get to know our managers as well. Not necessarily as friends, but get to know a bit about that, that personal side to them. And then that helps with that rapport and, and, and some of those trickier conversations, maybe. So. And does going around your manager and talking to their boss, does that limit your ability to manage up because you pinch off that communication? Dangerous. Yeah, more problematic. Mm -hmm. Just going back to what Dan said there, I'm wondering now, I'm thinking there's a generational story here as well, isn't there? Because when, I don't know about you, but when I was at school, I was slightly different to my teachers and I did what I was told. Well, my kids at school now are not different to their teachers. They tell them what they think and the teachers yeah. have to suck it up. So, mm. I, you know, I wonder whether that generation is, you know, and in my mind, a school teacher was hierarchically higher than the students. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the case now? I, I'm not sure. I don't know whether, maybe I'll ask them. But if, that, if that's what they're being brought up in that environment, then when they get to work, if you are a, you know, a boss where it, it all goes in one direction, it's a one arrow transaction, if you like, then you're going to struggle as the generations come through. So it, is this going to breed out, essentially? Is it, or, or should I say breed in? Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's funny, when, when, when you have that community, and I agree with you, Tim, when, when you have that communication, I still think, and maybe, I, maybe this is old school, I don't know, but still got to be respectful mm. in your interactions, I, I, I believe. But... Maybe that, maybe I'm in that generation. I don't know. Um, Who is managing up not respectful? Or is there risk? It, it is, but how you go about doing it, I, I think how you communicate something has got to be respectful, I think. But, but how is that any different to being respectful in the workplace anyway? Yeah, so, and I, I think that tunes into the elegance piece as well. You know, you need to be respectful in order for it to be elegant. If you want to, if you're managing upwards, you generally want, you want something from your manager, don't you? Whether it's a, well, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, it, you know, you're going to be respectful, you're going to be open, you're, you're going to do the best you can to help them meet the pain points. That, because otherwise, as, as Robin has discovered, if you walk in and say, this isn't working, I don't like it, it doesn't work out for you. Um, and, and some of these conversations are best done in private, in mm -hmm. a one-to-one, -one, versus if you're bringing up these issues or if you're bringing up these requests in a group setting. Um, sometimes that just kind of ups the ante a little bit more than perhaps you would want it to. That's a good yeah. point. Too. I've tried that too. That doesn't work either. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think some of it is you got to understand what 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 makes your manager tick. Um, mm -hmm. Just as we have to understand ourselves, what makes us tick? What makes our managers tick? What are their communication channels? How do they prefer? You, you know, is it through Teams? Is it through email? Is it is it picking up the phone? Um, you know. It, we're all busy, you know, how best do we communicate? Um, and what should that communication look like? Yeah. And I want to go back to the point that I think you made, Dan, about should managers be inviting this and then and should organizations be inviting this? And I feel like the answer to that is yes. You can't have a one-way communication and have a successful organization. It just doesn't work. And if a culture isn't designed to make it happen, then you have to figure out, like, how do you make that? How do you make it safe for someone to give feedback, to manage up, to, to do that? Oh, yeah, and I guess in, in, somewhere in there, there's a sort of, it's, it's the anti-bullying side of things, isn't it? You've got a sort of bullying boss who's controlling and influencing, and then, then you've got, at the other end of the spectrum, you've got a sort of open two-way conversation that allows uh, that allows information to feed both ways, and for it to be received, of course, because it's all very well flowing the information, but if it isn't heard, um, there's no point. Um, but, I, you know, I think from the message really is that if, you can you can manage upwards if you want to let's do it elegantly yeah so that's our 10 minutes i'm going to have to cut us off there thank you for having this conversation with me i greatly appreciate it and i will do it again soon i hope you guys will join me thanks thank you thank you robin